Hello everyone, so I'm here with another video and this time I'm covering process capability. Very interesting topic, most of the people want to know how to calculate the process capability so that's why I'm making this video. Okay, so let's start now. So the first and foremost thing is stability. Please note, whenever we are going for checking or uh, want to know what is the process capability of some particular process, okay. So before that, first and foremost thing that we need to do is stability check. We need to check whether data is stable or not. For example, I have the data of yield loss. Now what's the meaning of yield is nothing but I'm adding some input, you can see and this is the output quantity and I divide output quantity with the input quantity which gives me the yield right so I just want to know whether yield loss so this is the yield loss data which is nothing but for example this divide by this is 99.3 assume so my yield loss will be 1 minus 99.3 or 100 minus 99.3 which is 0.69% and same way I calculated the yield loss for all the numbers or all the process or all the data now I want to check whether the yield loss is stable or not so how can I check whether it is stable or not? So the best way to check is the control chart. Okay, I'll show you in my in my other videos what's the meaning of control chart, how you can check. Okay, uh, but there is a way in many times it's very simple to calculate the, the stability as well as the process capability. Okay, let me show you how, how it works. So firstly, I'm going with the same data. You can see in this Excel file, I have the same data, input, output, and the yield loss. I do is I just copy the entire data and I use Minidef 17 and I'm pasting that Minidef on Minidef 17 right so this is our Minidef 17 you can see and when I click on stat and I go to the quality tool and I go to the capability analysis please note there are two kind of capability analysis one is uh, definitely one we can go and click on the normal and we will get the process capability using this uh, normal function but mostly I try to use this this is called capability six pack now what's the meaning of six pack it gives me six graphs okay which not only talks about capability but also talk about stability also talk about whether data is normal or non normal and there are many other things okay let me show you this this is very useful so just click on capability six pack and go to the normal so here you have to select this e loss and the subgroup size for this case I have the data only in the in in one subgroup size why one subgroup size because I'm not taking five sample at one go and I'm not taking five or four or three samples okay at one time so if I'm taking let's say five sample then after two minute five sample then again five sample five sample five sample so my subgroup size will be five but in our case I'm taking only one sample one sample one sample so my subgroup size is one now it's a yield loss data so that's why the lower specification limit I'm setting as zero upper specification limit as three percent okay this is the specification limit given by the customer now just go to estimate and here uh, mostly you will not having you will be having this kind of uh, window so you have to just click on this because I want the the standard deviation within the subgroup as well as the overall which actually gives me the capabilities for within as well as the capability for overall and when I click OK and here also in the options window it will also show me the last 25 data point if I want to increase to light I can do it if I have some target assume I have a target of assume so I can set that target okay and I also want uh, so this time I'm checking the CP and PP uh, the capability statistics or if you want to calculate your Z value so this is also one way you can calculate the Z value okay for now I'm clicking on CP click OK and finally OK when you click OK as I mentioned it will give you a six pack report okay now the six pack report is the first thing is called I chart or the moving range chart okay mostly the first thing we want to check whether data is stable or not so this is the way to check the stability is the control chart and the other windows are also there which talks about the capabilities in the capabilities please note there is a big difference between stability and capability so when we talk about stability we will see whether the data is in control or not if the data is in control then I will say data is stable let me repeat 
if the data is under control i will say data is stable how can i check whether it is control or not if it is a individual data point then i will use i chart if it is a subgroup then i will use x bar r chart or x bar s chart it depends which kind of data i have and if the data is under control then i will say yes data is stable now coming to the capability in the capability part the biggest different uh, difference is your lower and upper specification limit you can see here so in capability part we are checking whether our data or our process is capable in terms of customer specification limit so this upper specification limit and lower specification limit is given by the customer so in our case i said usl at 0.03 you can see here and lsl as 0.00 and i also set a target of 0.01 okay so this is the graph for capability this is the graph for normal so whether my data my current data is a normal data or a non normal data if it is a non normal data then in that case you have to use stat just go to quality tools and you have to go to capability analysis for non normal okay so please don't forget in our case how you can check data is normal or non normal you can check from this graph so in this graph you have the p value and ad ad is nothing but the anderson darling test which is for uh, probability plot so in this case your p value is greater than 0.05 so definitely your data is a normal data okay and you remember we have selected 30 observations so this is the 30 observation last 30 observations trends okay you can see and it is not showing any particular trend it's scattered uh, around the values okay so these are nothing but the observation now the most important thing which is this this is called capability plot this will give you your cp your cpk and also the ppm that is called parts per million and also give the steady uh, standard deviation within and for our case when we have the individual plot we will definitely go with the overall datas okay when you have the subgroups let's say five or six subgroup then we want to check the within as well as overall both now what is the meaning of within now you you have to understand if i'm taking five sample five sample five sample five sample so there are chances that within those five sample also there will be some variations or study or standard deviation right so this this particular area will tell me for those subgroup but in this particular case i have all the individual data points right so that's why i will go with the overall capability plot so in this case i can take the pp value as 0 0.8 83 pp is nothing but your population capabilities uh, index or capability and uh, this cpm is 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 nothing but your uh, your uh, capability with respect to the target value okay and then we have the ppk as well and the ppm as well so all these overall information will tell me how much is my cp how much is my cpk then how much is my pp how much is my cpm how much is my ppk so please also note that my in this case my cp is 0 0.77 cpk is 0 0.69 i will tell you within two minutes how you can calculate now in this entire table if i also want to know according to this particular data and with these two specific specification limit lower and upper uh, how much is the sigma level of my process of this particular process so through this you can calculate how you can calculate you have parts per million as uh, 25,000 yeah 25,297.25 so from this number I can calculate my sigma level using this DPF, DPMO formula but the other way through mini tab it's very easy just go to stat again Go to quality tools and where you have the six pack study go to normal and here in the estimate part uh, sorry in the option part just click on benchmark z or the sigma level it will tell you the sigma level immediately just click ok and click ok now here you remember so here it will also give you your sigma value so you can see here Z bench is 2.16 for the overall and for the within is Z bench is 1.95 so your Z bench value is actually coming from your capability value or CP value so there is also a link between how you can calculate the Z score or sorry a sigma level of your data with the CP value so I have given you an overview let's go in detail and understand what is CP and what is CPK okay let's go back into into our slides 
as I mentioned, the first and foremost thing is to check the stability. So this is how you can check the stability. So according to the graph, looks like the data is stable. Data is stable. So if your data is stable, then only you can check the capability. So please don't forget, if you have an unstable process, then there is no point there is no meaning to check the process capability please don't forget that part so whenever you are going for the capability first check stability using your imr chart if it is individual data or x bar r chart using your subgroup uh, data okay or there are many other charts as well now the next thing and the very important thing is called cp which is called process capability or capability now please note that whenever we are talking about capability or process capability we are checking the ability to meet the customer requirement in case of stability we are not having any specifications right we are just checking whether our data is in control or not or in direct way our data was checking only this part but here you can see we have the lower specification we have the upper, upper specification limit and this is nothing but our normal process and normal process means it will have plus three sigma this side and minus three sigma this side or overall i will say it's a total six sigma from here to here now six sigma i'm not saying a six sigma process please understand this is nothing but six standard deviation overall so three standard deviation from the mean this is your mean and three standard deviation this side to total distance is called six standard deviation this is also called nt natural tolerance nt okay and this is your upper specification limit this is your lower specification limit i put 0 and 0 0.03 just for this particular example okay so within this example if you can see this is your lower specification limit upper specification limit and the standard deviation is 0 0.006 something is there right and uh, these are the value of pp which i have just taken from uh, the mini tab so in this case the formula for the cp is nothing but because i'm comparing with the with the customer specification so the difference between the lower and the upper specification limit the difference is nothing but the distance from here to here so this is called usl minus lsl divided by my natural tolerance or my process natural tolerance which is nothing but the six sigma so in this way for this particular example if i want to calculate my cp which you can see here the pp or the cp value for the overall data point is given here right so in this case my sigma equals to 0 0.006 sigma is nothing but the standard deviation which is here 0 0.006 lsl obviously 0 usl as 0 0.03 if you put all these numbers here in this formula you will get 0 0.833 you can see here the pp or indirect with the cp for the overall number okay now if you want to calculate the cp for the within so in that case you will have the different standard deviation i can show you in the mini tab <clears throat> so in the mini tab let me just minimize this and open this or enlarge this yeah so you can see here is the cp as 0.07 and pp as 0.83 the only difference is your standard deviation the standard deviation value here is 0.006004 which is the overall standard deviation and this is the standard deviation of within which is 0.006525 okay so this is why you have the different values cp and pp right now let's move on another thing is called capability index let us try to understand with the same concept as cp cp is nothing but your usl minus lsl divided by 6 multiplied by standard deviation or natural tolerance i have few questions which will definitely uh, give entire uh, thing about cp and cpk the first question for you is this suppose you have the lower specification as 5 lower specification upper specification as 15 so this will be 15 minus 10 so this will become sorry 15 minus 5 will become 10 right and i'm giving you a natural tolerance of 6 so 6 standard deviation 6 multiplied by standard deviation is nothing but your natural tolerance or nt is 10 so in the first case your cp value will be 10 in the bottom case if you see this is your entire process and i'm telling you the cp equals to obviously usl is same lsl is same divided by nt in this case is 13 so you are having less 
so i'm asking which process is more capable definitely you will tell me oh, oh the process number one is capable you're right you'll not say because your cp value is also less or also from this bell curve you can see this process is going out of specification so this is this process is is less stable you're right so if your cp is one or greater than one please note my point if your cp is one or greater than one always your process tolerance will be less than your specification difference let me re reiterate so if your cp is greater than one you can see if your cp is greater than one it can be greater than one only in one case or only in the cases when your natural tolerance or your six standard deviation or i would say the overall this process tolerance is <coughs> is less than the difference between your usl and lsl right then only you will have this value greater than one so always note whenever your natural tolerance or the process tolerance is less than the difference between the upper and lower specification limit you have high process capability now let's talk about the second case so you can see the case number three and case number four these two cases now i'm asking which process is more capable in these both the cases your nt is five your cp is 10 sorry your usl minus lsl is 10 so your cp in both the cases is 2 now i will ask the similar question according to you which process is more capable think about it by looking at the graph immediately you will say process number this process number 3 is more capable why because your process is within the specification limit but again i will ask in both the cases your cp is 2 in both the cases your process capability is same then how can you say this process is more capable so please understand these both the process are capable but number four is not centered so the process with the cp greater than 1.33 or i would say greater than one is a capable process but there is a question is it centered so in both the cases this is centered but this is off center so it means this cp only the cp value will not tell you the entire picture right so this cp is not telling you whether the process is truly capable or not so it will say yes capable but it will not tell you whether it's centered or not or if it process is not centered then maybe it is not beneficial for you right if i want to reach to the office at the morning eight o'clock but I am reaching every day 9 o'clock. Will the company allow me? They will know, go, go from here. Right? So that's why I am saying the process having a very good natural tolerance. Very precise. But still it can be uncapable because it is off center. Now how you can check whether the process is centered or not. For that we have this CPK value which is called process capability index or capability index. Okay the formula if you see this formula it is nothing but the usl minus mu mu is nothing but your x bar or mu you can say divided by three standard deviation please have a look to this formula so this is talking about this area let me let me show you again this is your usl this is your mean so this area the difference of this divided by the difference of natural tolerance right because it's a three sigma or three standard deviation in your formula you have six standard deviation and here it is three standard deviation means only this difference or indirect way half of your natural tolerance so in this case if your natural tolerance is 10 so half of this will be 5 5 is equals to 3 sigma or 3 standard deviation right similarly the the other part of this formula is this this is your mu which is your average minus the lower specification limit means this difference divided by again the natural tolerance so what i am checking is so i'm checking whether this difference usl minus mu or this difference mu minus usl divided by the natural tolerance of this side and natural tolerance of this side so i'm checking whether your process is centered or not and i'm taking the smaller value so maybe your process if suppose your process now in this case your process is having cp lower so this side cp is called cp lower this side cpk value is called uh, upper cpk upper okay or upper process capability index 
lower process capability index so in this case x bar minus lsl now x bar is what 50 minus 40 so 50 minus 40 is 10 divided by the half of the natural tolerance or three standard deviation which is nothing but 5 so in this case your answer is 2 in the same when you calculate the upper cpk usl minus x bar divided by three standard deviation you are getting 2 so in both the cases you are getting the same number which is telling you the cpk for this particular process is 2 means your process is truly centered within the specification and please also note that your cpk value is more than 1 so when your cpk value is more than 1 means your process is capable and when your cpk lower and upper both are same it means it is centered okay now let me tell you the other example you can see this picture in this picture when i calculate the cpk lower it is coming as x bar which is your 58 minus lsl so it will be uh, minus lsl will be 40 so 58 minus 40 it should be 18 by mistake it's written it should be 18 divided by 5 5 is what your natural tolerance is 10 half of this natural tolerance is 5 so 18 divided by 5 is 3.6 right and the the cpk upper which is nothing but 60 minus 58 2 divided by 5 is 0 0.4 now in this case the cpk lower is not equals to cpk upper and the lowest value out of these two is 0 0.4 so in this case my value of cpk is 0 0.4 and it is less than 1 so if your cpk is less than 1 your process is not centered first thing and the second thing you can also check your cpk value uh, cpk lower and upper are not equal okay so in this case in this entire picture i would say the process may be capable i can check the cp value using the formula of usl minus lsl divided by six standard deviation or natural tolerance so in this case if i calculate cpk i will say 60 minus 40 which is 20 divided by natural tolerance of 10 so i will get a cp value of 2 which is very good because it's higher than 1 but the cpk value is 0 0.4 so i will say your process is off centered right so please also note that point process is capable when your cp and cpk both are greater than 1 always remember that and this is very interesting to tell you please always remember this your cpk value sorry cp value is nothing but when you add both these both of these cpk upper and cpk lower just add this so you, what you will do x bar and this x bar will cut from each other right you will get usl minus lsl divided by divided by six divided by three sigma and when you divide it by two you will get six sigma right so your cpk or sorry cp value is nothing but cpk lower plus cpk upper divided by 2 always remember this formula so this is how you are getting your cp value and cpk value and telling that whether your process is capable or not so cp value tell you whether the process is capable cpk value will tell you whether process is centered so whenever you are checking the capability or process capability don't forget first thing is to check the stability then you have to check whether data is normal or not then you have to check your cp cpk value if you want to calculate the sigma value you can also calculate the same way which i have shown you in the mini tab so that's the best way you can check all the six specs of your process i have a simple question for you i will wait for your response uh, in the comment window please have a look to this and tell me the answer i will tell you the answer in my next video so the question is the specification limit the specification limit for TED, TED is nothing but turnaround time, is 15 plus minus 3 days. So I would say 12 is the lower specification limit, 18 is the upper specification limit, 18 days. The average of the particular data is given as 17 days. Standard deviation is 1.5 days. Can you tell me what is the process capability? Options are 1.0, 1.5, 0 0.67, 0 0.75. Okay.